From cars to pedestrians. Hey guys, did you know that before cars were the main mode of daily transportation in America, pedestrians ruled the streets? As cars took over our streets, deaths of pedestrians just kept climbing. But now we are taking back our streets. It is important to recognize the crucial components of a successful walkable environment. In a 2010 paper, Ewing and Servero laid out the four Ds of a walkable environment. Diversity. This means mixed land use and the functions it serves. Density, distance to transit, and destination accessibility, which all pretty much speak for themselves. Atlanta is our first example of how implementing these concepts can increase public safety and the health of its residents. By the year 2050, the population is expected to increase in Atlanta by roughly 3 million people. And they're making sure that as this population goes up, so does the walkability. Check out these graphs. Here you can see in areas with higher walkability and food store access, mortality rates are lower than in areas with less destination accessibility. Correlations. Since Atlanta is a big city, we're going to focus on one neighborhood, Midtown, and the projects they currently have underway. This is the Art Walk, a half mile long pedestrian promenade shared street and linear park connecting the Midtown Marta Station to Arts District Station over five blocks of Peachtree Walk. This walk is repurposing on-street parking spaces into public plazas and parklets. Now, the Pisa de Resistance must be the 10-block new green space concept currently being investigated that would stretch from 10th Street down to North Avenue. This would be a 25-acre park that will connect communities that have been previously disjointed by dangerous and ugly highways. It will provide access to healthier commutes for far more people. Now I'd like to show you how in Copenhagen, where they've already made the shift to walkability a priority, things have changed. Just check out this before and after. Their before looks a lot like any city USA, right? The shift in design has caused 35% more people to walk and a nearly 600% increase of pedestrian spaces along with a 400% increase in outdoor seating for stopping and staying activities. Now that you've seen what this looks like, let's break down how the shift in urban planning can benefit everyone. When we combine sustainability, livability, and health, we create an environment that is socially and economically sustainable, thus better mental health. The National Association of City Transportation provides before and after blueprints of what an auto-oriented street would look like if transformed into a people-oriented street. It looks way better for sure. These concepts require us to switch the way we think about transportation. The goal is to make it easier for people to walk more and drive a lot less. I hope that you can take these ideas with you going forward in designing the cities of the future.